I want to bring in our reporter who led this entire special investigation from the very beginning, Kim Lengel. And Kim, we knew going into it this wasn't going to be a simple mm -hmm. issue. This was a complex issue, and I know nothing got resolved, but... Um, from a sampling of the response we got, uh, people certainly learned a lot uh, through the last four yeah, years. Yeah, I learned a lot. We went to Dimmick, we went to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. We heard from pe people who are saying they're sick and tired of drinking fracking fluid every day. We heard from the other side who said those people are just crazy. And we found out through a reporting that New York State actually doesn't have a lot of research on this. They didn't figure out the yep. numbers because as we heard from the industry and from the opponents, they don't have the numbers either. So this is all on a best guess scenario. And I'm also very impressed that in the whole week, um, and I don't want to jinx this, uh, we didn't make that dangerous slip when talking about <laughs> fracking. Uh, now, all week long, we've been asking you folks at home to sound off, because it's certainly not just a hypothetical debate. This is the debate in New York State that will take place this year. And it could certainly bring in a lot of jobs, possibly bring a lot of revenue into the state, but also the consequences, as Kim said, still so much unknown out of this. And this is what the governor and the legislature will have to really wrestle with in 2012. So to get an idea of just a small sample, we've got tons of reaction from you, um, to get your input on this, let's reach into our mailbag now and see what you folks are saying. All right, uh, Kim, why don't we start off? Uh, who we got? Donald Chu emailed me to say the energy companies have the money to buy the airwaves, but he writes the truth will still come through as long as brave people like you will tell it. And Laureen Hare from Berks County, Pennsylvania, which is my hometown county, she wrote me about her own experience with hydrofracking. She writes, years ago, a company who wanted to drill came in and went to landowners and bought leases for their right to drill on many people's land. It was free money and most people had no idea what the consequences might be if there was really a well on their property. She wrote, it's now almost impossible to get out of the lease and the company keeps sending money. I'm glad that New Yorkers are being careful. Rich, what do you think? Well, uh, you know, uh, I heard that question asked a few times mm -hmm. when we were doing this. And a lot of you reached out to us on our message boards in addition uh, to the tweets that you're sending to Kim. And if you went to rnntv.com, and I suggest you continue to do so to answer the question that we've got uh, posted right there. If you think the economic benefits of fracking outweigh the risks. Um, here again, some of the samples we got in that form. Andrew writing us saying more than a million wells have been drilled and hydraulically fractured in the past 60 years in the U.S. and not a single case where the frac fluid has come in contact with groundwater. The opponents of the uh, have pit the environment and the economy at odds. The truth is energy in the environment have coexisted quite successfully. I will politely say there's some debate over that, but let's go to Catherine Foster who wrote that she feels differently. I am from Ohio, Catherine writes, where we have been unfortunate to receive Pennsylvania's leftover unnamed poisonous chemicals from their fracking practices, and now our governor trying to lease our state parks for fracking. Catherine also writes that earthquakes have been found to happen in several areas where fracking is being done. Now, you've also been reaching out to us through social media. And, Kim, we've got a bunch of tweets on oh, this. Oh, man, the Twitter was just blowing up on this. And Natalie Sweeney tweeted me the best one. She tweeted me, if you can't fix it, don't break it. Quite eloquent, I think. Rebecca also tweeted me, thanks so much for all your work to get the truth out about the horrors of fracking. You are a true journalist. And John Armstrong asked me via Twitter if we've looked at the real estate issues in relation to hydrofracking. And, John, we actually did. That's our web extra on hydrofracking for today. Go to rnntv.com slash hydrofracking. There you can see two interviews that we did with two homeowners who decided to move out of Dimmick, Pennsylvania. Here's a sneak peek with one of them. What do you say to a prospective buyer when I, you're I showing tell, the house? I, I tell, well, if, if someone was looking to do buy you say, it, and here's I our mean, lovely hydrofracking rig? I mean, to, what do you say? Even to renters, I say, you know, there's a well pad right there, and they're going to build a compressor station. I'm not going to hide it. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah you can't. You know. It'll poison the whole world. I try not to uh, candy coat things for my kids. You know, I mean, they're real issues. They need to be talked about. Again, you can see that interview on our website at rnntv.com slash hydrofracking. And you can send me your thoughts via email, kimlangle at rnntv.com, or send me a tweet at kimlangle on Twitter. Rich? I'm going to mark that family down as an opponent <laughs> of fracking. Um, but i got to tell you, um, and I, I don't speak for Kim, but we talked about this. 
after the entire week of hearing it, I, as Kim is, is still conflicted. This is not an easy choice here. States like Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York State have to make here. So, of course, we'll keep coming back to the issue. Um, now, as we laid out last night, lawmakers, they're going to have a tough time finally reaching that decision for New York and what the next steps are. And are we closer to seeing drilling rigs pop up in New York? All comments, of course, that and issues that will follow throughout the year. All right. We're going to uh, jump to a quick commercial break, everybody, and we're going to take a, a look at an issue very close uh, to a lot of people's hearts, and that is whether new technology is really getting into your privacy. Is Big Brother right here alive and well in America? We'll be right back with that.